remember that tune, Grandma? You used to sing it to me at night. Surely you remember, right? Do you remember me? Of course she does, Lila. How could she forget you? You do remember her. I know it. Girls, she wants to remember you, and she's trying to tell you that. But you have to understand it's her aphasia. But she does love you and wants what's best for you. Then why won't she talk? Dr. C, can you take Lila to get some pudding? Sometimes this is too much for her. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Lila. I'll show you where the secret pudding stash is. <laughs> Grandma, it's me, Becca. I have straight A's. I know you're proud. I can now do 25 fuetes, less than what you did at my age, but I'm working really hard to catch up to you. Lila made the dance team at school. She's following in our footsteps. Mom and Dad, I'm sure they'd visit you if they weren't in heaven, but I know they miss you. I'm here every day, and I miss you. I brought something. A gift. For you. It's a cassette of your favorite song. Maybe you'll remember. I am a lonely boy walking down the street. It was stupid enough to ignore him for a week. I want, I want it my way. They want it their way. But they don't understand my ways I'm just going to leave I cried every night Trying to quit Quit the addiction That was eating at me like a tick tock Felt like time was slowing down Trapped in the time war Never coming back It might be time for you guys to let your grandmother rest. Shh. Becca, I don't think she'll. Lucille, you need to stop fighting. Who is this? It's me, your aphasia. M my. What? How rude of me. I should introduce myself more properly. The name's... Aphasia. Broca's Aphasia. I'm what stands in your way of expressing speech. And right now, you and this music are preventing me from doing what I've been doing for many years. Leave me alone. Stop trying to talk. Talking always does more harm than good! What... what do you mean? You don't actually think you're what's best for the girls, do you? I don't want them to get separated. But you're not fit to take care of them. If you can't talk, how are you supposed to tell them to do their homework or clean their room? That's why I'm trying to get rid of you. So I can tell them that. First of all, you will never be rid of me. Secondly, you can't even tell them you love them. So raising them is completely out of the question you're incapable of raising Becca and Lila. You're wrong. I'm more than capable of loving them and giving them a happy life. Then talk. See what happens. <gasps> Did she just- She talked. She heard the music and she talked. Music therapy. <laughs> What's, What's music, music therapy? therapy? Music therapy is the clinical and evidence-based use of music interventions. 
It is used to accomplish individualized goals within a therapeutic relationship. It needs a credentialed professional who has completed an approved music therapy program. But Dr. Collymore, you have not completed an approved music therapy program. Consider this my training. Meet Lucille, grandmother to Becca and Lila. She's been taking care of them for the past three years after the passing of their parents. She's all they have left, and she needs to get better, or Child Protective Services might put them in foster care, and I fear they may be separated. While she's been here, I've been taking care of those kids as if they were my own, and I need Lucille to stay alive. I need Lucille to get better for the girls. But we've tried everything, and still, she doesn't talk. She hears a song, and suddenly, she starts to speak. I may not be a trained professional, but I'm Dr. Oliver Collymore, and this is my music therapy. She talked. Who? My grandmother. Lila, I really don't think this is healthy. No, really, she talked. She said, I. Are you sure she wasn't just gasping for air? I don't want you to be mad, but maybe you're just hearing this because you're not ready to let her go. Dana, that's not how you should have said it. She needs to know. Guys, I swear I heard her, and you will too, soon enough. Maybe you should spend the night with me. No, she's actually talking. I'm not crazy. Lila, what's wrong? They're saying I'm crazy because Grandma talked. You're not crazy. Your grandma did talk. Our grandma talked, you guys. I don't think so. Me neither. Let's go. Yeah. Bye, guys. Don't listen to them. They don't know what's going on, and it's none of their business anyway. What if they take her away from us? Because we're crazy. I don't want to lose you. You're not going to lose me. Stop thinking like that. It's not going to happen. Hi, I'm Allison, and I'm here with Child Protective Services, and this is my partner. We're worried about your safety and well-being. We're going to separate you two. You're never going to see her again. We know what's best. It's not going to happen. They won't separate us. They won't. All right, I believe you. Don't forget, you're babysitting Ava tonight. Thanks. Honey, Ava's trying to show you something. I'll look in a minute. Oliver. I think I'm finally getting somewhere in my research. You're still on this whole music therapy thing? Honey, it's not going to work on her. It just won't. Nothing is impossible. Dad taught me that. See, she gets it. Why can't you? I don't want you to miss out on your child's life because of a whim. And I really need to talk to you. In a minute, dear. I really need to get to the bottom of I'm this. I'm pregnant. What? It means I'm going to be a big sister. Duh. Ava, why don't you go to your room so I can talk with your dad? I really did try to tell you. This house is too small for another kid. And who's going to take care of it? When Ava was born, you were a stay-at-home mom, but now you have a job. Who's going to be home with the baby? I thought you could. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Well, since you're doing most of your work independently now, I was thinking you could do your music therapy research from home and be a stay-at-home dad. Well, it appears you've thought about this without me. Face it, you spend very little time with Ava. Okay, that's not true. Oh, really? Did you know that she got cast in her school play? But that's amazing. When is it? It was last Thursday. Oh. You need to spend more time with your kids. I'm pregnant and you're staying home this time. These kids deserve to spend time with their dad beyond vacations. Hi, Dr. and Mrs. Collymore. Sorry I'm late. You can take it out of my pay. I'm just running late from recital rehearsal. Don't worry about it, Becca. We really do appreciate it. We can't wait to be front and center in the audience this Saturday. 
It's great to see where your priorities are, Oliver. If I were to say that juggling my family and my research was easy, I'd be downright lying. Truth be told, I was torn. I wanted to be with my wife and my daughter, but I also wanted to be with my other family, with Lila and with Becca. I was beginning to live this double life. I was conflicted. If I stopped the experiment, I let one family down. And if I didn't stop the experiment, I let the other down. What was I to do? What was I to choose? If you're taking care of Lucille, you're choosing to take care of millions of people who could really use music therapy. But it'll cost you your marriage and Ava. Is it really worth that? I'd choose Ava. Well, I'd choose Lucille. I wouldn't want to be the reason Lila and Becca get separated. I mean, Collie Moore, you're their only hope. I just give up. Throw in a towel. I decided that some things are worth fighting for, and music therapy is worth fighting for. But you're lonely. You can't do this alone. You're gonna need some help. Get help. Lucille's time is fleeting and she needs help quickly. As much as I would love to create and claim this research as my own, it takes a village. I spend the entirety of the next day researching specialists in music therapy, and I come across... August Taylor, MTBC. I'm sorry, MTB... Music therapist, board certified. <laughs> He's a little pushy and abrasive. He doesn't let you get a word in. <laughs> He's brutally honest, but he's talented. It was costly to bring him here, and our grant, unfortunately, didn't go through. So I have to take the money out of my own pocket, which means my family has to downsize. For example, I had to sell our car, so we're taking the bus now. You sold our car? Yeah, the wife wasn't too happy about that one. Small price to pay for my invaluable expertise, I might add. Where's the test subject anyway? Her name is Lucille, and she's a living, breathing person, not a test subject. Is that how you treat all your patients, Mr. Taylor? Like guinea pigs? We're professionals. We have a job to do. Playing patty cake with her granddaughters won't fix her. And as a doctor, you know that. And just so you know, I could say the same thing about- Excuse me, Mr. Taylor. This may be how you run things at your facility, but not here. Here we are more than colleagues. We help and protect each other. Protect? In 2018, only 5% of physicians were African American. In med school, you should have learned that you do anything to be at the top of your field. If you want me to help you claim this research as your own, well, you brought me here for nothing. I'm not here to protect you. I'm here to protect myself. You know, you're young, and you've already achieved so much in life, yet you know nothing. Unlike most, I started from the bottom and I rose up. I made it to the top of my class at Yale. I'm sure you didn't know that. I wanted to be a physician scientist, but I'm not. I study independently. If you were smarter, you would have inquired about that. And why do you study independently? I was at the top of my class, and they asked everyone to apply for an internship, and only five people would be selected. All of my classmates thought that I was a shoe-in. However, behind the scenes was a different story. My professor grew fond of another black male student who was very bright, but still, I was better. Well. The professor thought that too many black interns would intimidate his patients. And he really liked the other guys, so I didn't get it. I was traumatized, and I vowed that I would work independently as soon as I was able. I knew I wasn't gonna get it. But I had hoped that I would at least be considered. We have to do better. We have to do better and help each other out in this career field. And we can't let this be a competition. We can't. We need help. We need the support of people saying enough is enough. Enough has become enough, truly. You know, let me tell you, I had perfect attendance. I had straight A's. 
I work so hard, and the fact that because the teacher doesn't necessarily like me as much doesn't mean that I shouldn't be given an opportunity because of the color of my skin. We have to do better. My wife is set to deliver a baby boy. We have to do better for him. We have to do better. We have to help each other out. We have to create opportunities for each other because people aren't going to do that. We have to look at black people and say, yeah, they're good. Not because they're good for a black person, not because they're good and we need a black person to meet a quota. Rather, they're good, period. There's too much going on in the world and being a doctor has always been the place where I forget about it and you, Mr. Taylor, remind me of it. That I'm a token black person going up against more token black people and we're going to have to fight for our platform. So you have to help me make this a better industry, in a better country, in a better world. Not a perfect world, but a better one. Thank you for that. And you're right. We've been taught to compete against each other to change the future of medical profession for black people, for the future people of color. But we all know that's not the way. Truth be told, I'm scared that I won't be able to build a legacy. There are these voices in my head that tell me I'm not doing enough and I'm not going to be remembered. I just want my legacy to be that I helped pave the way for future African Americans. And I guess seeing what you've done here, I'm petrified that you'll take that away from me. I hear voices too. They tell me I'm not good enough and they're always conflicted. Do I continue this research or do I focus on my family? However, I look at Lucille and her kids and I know what I'm meant to do. We are constantly pinned against each other because it divides us and makes us weaker. But I'm sure we can conquer this together and get Lucille to talk. For the girls. For the girls. So, I've been taking a close look at your research and I wrote this song and I'm wondering if it will spark something in Lucille. August, the lyrics are amazing, but I really don't think this is Just going to... Just trust me on this one. To comfort me through the good things and the bad things Through all of life I need And whoa You're right by my side Love? I'm back! You never leave. Look, Aphasia, I know you think me talking is a threat to the safety of my girls. However, if I have one message left in me, I want to tell them that I- You don't, you don't get, get one, one final, final message. message. You get silence. Those, Those are the cards that were dealt. dealt. And now... You have to be quiet for the good of the girls. You know, I pity them. Your talking instills this false hope that you're going to be okay, but you're just not, Lucille. Just face it! You're wrong. No, I'm honest. You know what? I'm right, too. Attention! Can everyone please quiet down? Excuse me! 
Thank you. Anyways, I'm sure you all know by now that my grandmother is unable to speak. But what you don't know is that several doctors have been using music therapy and it's actually helping her to communicate. The problem is, however, that music therapy is extremely underfunded. And if this can help my grandmother, I'm sure it can help many people out there. So next weekend, I'll be hosting a talent show here at school. The entry fee and ticket sales will all go towards music therapy research. Who's in? I'll enter. I'll sing, and Becca, we can do our ballet routine from the dance competition season. Love it. Who else? Can I beatbox? You can do anything. School appropriate, though. Anyone else? I can hula hoop and jump rope. I can talk backwards. And I can share my poetry. The event was a huge success. We raised over a thousand dollars for music therapy research. Things are beginning to seem so much brighter. However, it's been days since my grandmother last spoke, and I'm worried that love is going to be the last thing I ever hear from her. Dr. Taylor and Dr. Collymore are working extremely hard, but I'm scared. I'm scared too, but we need hope, Becca. You're right. We spent days, weeks, and now months working with Lucille, and she hasn't communicated in a very long time. I fear that we're losing her. I fear that I'm losing her. Today is August's last day before he goes back home, and although he gave me all the tools I need, I don't think this can continue without him. See, I have faith in Dr. Collymore, but he needs to have faith in himself. He's so much wiser than he knows. He's taught me so much and gave me a better mentality that's going to carry me through the rest of my years. If anyone can get Lucille to speak again, it'll be him. But he can't lose faith. I think I have one more trick up my sleeve. Becca, come in here. What's up? Well, you were telling me that your grandmother taught you her favorite song on the guitar. Yeah. Well, here's my guitar. Play a little bit of it. Oh, August, I can't. Yes, you can. The whole song? Just a few lines. That's a little more than a few lines, but... Shh. It didn't work. Shh. Here we are again. I guess this is the final showdown. Ha <laughs> ha! You don't stand a chance against me. I've won twice before. I think I can win again. You're being so selfish! If you talk at this moment, your grandchildren will pay the price. Not you. You know they need me. They need to hear from me. And what about Dr. Collingmore? Bless his heart, he needs me to get better so he can continue to take care of his family. I know you think you know what's best for me, but I think this time I know what I'm doing. So now all of a sudden you care about Dr. Collingmore? He takes care of my children. And that's simply not his job. But it could be that way. The kids won't have to be separated and you can get well in your own time and everyone lives happily ever after. That's far too much to ask of Dr. Collymore. Look, I should have thanked you a long time ago. So let me preface by saying I'm beyond grateful for you. You changed the course of my life, and Becca and Dr. Collingmore can do amazing things because of you. 
But Lila and Becca don't need to grow up so soon. If you think so. I know so. You! She said you! Wait, what was her first word? I. And her second? Love. She's been trying to tell you and Lila something this whole time. She said I love you. I love you too. Lila, come in! We'll leave you two alone. What's all the excitement about? Grandma just said she loves us. No way! Did she really? Wait, wait, so then what's next for us? Does this mean we won't be separated? I don't know, but it's a starting point. We're gonna be okay, right? Definitely. In a perfect world, our community would be more empathetic to the elderly population. People would have paid more attention to Grandmother Lucille from the moment she developed aphasia. In a perfect world, August Taylor wouldn't have felt the need to prove himself due to the pressure of being an African-American male in the healthcare profession. In a perfect world, Dr. Collymore wouldn't have to sell his car to make ends meet for Becca and Lila. However, our world isn't perfect. This is the reality of our world and it's time to face the music. We need to help each other rewrite the story because as Dr. Collymore once said, you have to help me make this a better industry and a better country and a better world. Not a perfect world, but a better one. <laughs>